I was out at one of my permissions, as the UK boys call it, getting the jump on the starlings and sparrows that had moved in early because we have had unseasonably warm weather in the US. It started off normal enough. We got a starling here, he peeks his head over the edge of the barn. I take care of him with a clean heart and lung shot. The same applies to this guy, pretty much the same shot placement. And did I mention it was unseasonably warm right now? It's March 18th. I look up in this tree and I see a ruby-throated hummingbird. Why do you think they call them ruby-throated? Uh, this is why. <laughs> they really shine under the neck there. Anyway, we rarely ever see these birds until April. So I was quite taken back to see this little bugger up here already. He just shouldn't be this far north. They vacation, vacation, they overwinter in Central America. And they actually cross the Gulf of Mexico sometimes in one flight. And uh, the oil rig boys sometimes see these guys land on their rigs out in the middle of nowhere uh, just to take a break. It must be quite a sight to see a hummingbird land on an oil rig. That would be just a fantastically ironic photo I would love to see. Anyway, these little buggers shouldn't be here for another two weeks or so, and yet here one is. I go to the internet, and I go to a website devoted to hummingbird sightings. Yes, such a website does exist. This confirms my belief that every idea has been now used on the internet. If you're a web developer in college, I suggest you drop out now and go serve coffee at Starbucks, because there's nothing left to do. <laughs> Anyway, the first sighting in Wisconsin on this year, 2012, was up in central Wisconsin, and it turns out that my sighting was actually two days before this one. It shouldn't be too much of a surprise, though, because they were sighted just south of me in Illinois two days earlier. <laughs> anyway, I thought it was interesting, way early for these guys this year. Back to the issue of starling smacking. I was waiting for my next ex-starling to land up on the barn, and something catches the corner of my eye. I slink on over here to the camera and point it at the window, but it was too late. Um, but what I did see was something moving inside the milk house. This is the room where the goats on the property are milked. The farm is in transition right now from one farmer to another, so the milk house is just being used by the mistress of the farm. <laughs> for her arts and crafts right now. In the few months, when the new farmer comes in, this room will return to being a, a bustling assembly line of goats once again. I sneak on up to the milk house door and look what I see inside. Mr. Starling. I think this bird was gathering bits for his nest. This crafty bird didn't count on me shutting the door behind him. And it did not take him long to figure out just how much trouble he was in. It's strange though, here he is caulking away at me, and I really can't tell if this is fear or if he's pissed off. <laughs> I think it sounds more like he's irritated. And of course, I'm not going to do any shooting inside the milk house, even with a low caliber gun. I'm not pulling the trigger inside this small building. There's no way I could possibly get a, a safe backdrop. So I go and arm myself with a grain shovel and my slow motion camera. And I walk into the milk house, resolved to allow this video to about to become age-restricted by YouTube. I'm trying to hold the camera on this bugger and get a good grip on the shovel at the same time. When he sees the shovel in my hand, uh, he knows the story right away and does a very good job of keeping his distance from me. It becomes clear after a little while that I'm going to have to set this camera down and, you know, take a proper swing at him with two hands. But before I get the chance, the starling throws me for a loop. If you look at him as he's flying around the room here, he isn't just in a mad panic. He is sizing up his options. He's looking for a way out. He's not about to have a heart attack like a lot of other birds would. He is thinking. He is working out a problem. And eventually he lands on this wire. And watch the wheels turning right here. You can literally see the light bulb go on in this bird's head. 
And now check out the next move this bugger does. He finds a tiny seam in between the ceiling and the PVC ventilation. The seam is of course plugged up with insulation, but he plows right through it and gets away. Well, not gets away. He gets up into the main barn. So, I'm a little embarrassed, but I think I still got a decent shot at taking care of this bird. I exit, holding my head still reasonably high, and go get my gun and head to the main barn. Now, taking a bird out inside the barn can be kind of tricky. You need to make sure that there is a piece of wood, a support beam, behind the bird if you're going to take your shot. If you don't, the pellet will pass through the bird and damage the sheet metal of the barn. These house sparrows are good examples of shots that I just can't take. So this can be really tricky, and you couple this with the fact that this starling is not very comfortable in my presence, so he isn't just going to hold still for me. And on top of all that, because all the doors were closed in this barn, my slow motion camera didn't have adequate lighting. So what I was going to have to do is do my best to record him with one hand, and when he landed, take a quick shot using my eye. However, I would not get that chance. Son of a... The starling doesn't go too far once outside the building, though. He flies over to a fence about 50 yards away, but I saw him from peeking out that hole, so I decided to sneak back around the other side of the barn, but he catches me. And he bolts over to a large hickory tree on the edge of the farm. Now, this footage you're watching is from last season, and he actually went into the tree, so I couldn't get a shot at him. But his familiarity with that tree kind of got me thinking about last year's white whale of mine. There was a starling that lived out in that tree last year that I swear could duck the pellets when I fired them at him. Now, I don't know if it's the same bird or not, but I like to think that it is and that I have met my match. It'd make for a more interesting summer for sure. To wrap this up, this story is not over. When I stopped and thought, for a half a second I realized that the Starlings may have won the battle, but they are going to lose the war horribly. The idea that I'm going to execute actually isn't new to me. It's something that I did when I was eight years old. <laughs> and I'm going to employ that same strategy to take care of these birds. Of course, I didn't have a $1,500 pre-charged pneumatic air rifle when I was 8 years old, so you know that my methods aren't going to involve a really long holdover shot. If you haven't thought of it yourself by now, I'll leave you with a clue. Thanks so much for watching, guys.